In this final part of the lecture, we will talk about the history of medicine in Kharkiv, as well as about the history of our university and our medical school. The city of Kharkiv was founded by the Cossacks in 1654, on the site of abandoned ancient settlements of Slavs and Nomads. The first qualified doctor for the townspeople appeared here almost a hundred years later. But as you know from the previous part of the lecture, the Kazakhs always had military surgeons in their army, so the townspeople could use their services. First medical institutions in Kharkiv were the hospital houses that were organized at churches and monasteries in 18th century. The very first one was at Dormition Cathedral, at the old center of the city. It took care not only for sick, but also for poor and homeless people. The first secular clinic appeared in Kharkiv in the 1780s. It was just a small house with only one doctor. Since the Kazakh regiments were stationed in Kharkiv, at the end of the 18th century, a military hospital was established outside of the city walls. The city widened with time, and its center shifted north, so now hospital is turned out to be in the very center of the city. In 1792, a madhouse was established in Kharkiv. It was built on the outskirts of the city, near the fortress wall. In the tradition of that time, a madhouse was built together with a prison in a stone tower to keep mentally ill patients away from society. In the 19th century, the population of Kharkiv was constantly growing, and small hospitals could no longer cope with all patients. Therefore, in 1811, city purchased land and buildings outside of the city in the historic district which was called Saburova Dacha, because Dacha means country estate and this particular estate was originally owned by General Saburov. The Kharkiv hospital was moved there in 1812 and the mental hospital in 1820. Over time this medical complex has grown and became a large medical complex. It has survived to the present day, and now it is the oldest among survived medical institutions in Kharkiv. Our Department of Neurology and Psychiatry is situated on the territory of this medical complex, so on your fourth year of education you will have classes there. The further development of medicine in Kharkiv was closely tied to the medical school of Kharkiv University. So now I will begin the story of our school. In 1805, the first university in eastern Ukraine was established in Kharkiv. Initially it had only four faculties, including medical, and all of them were housed in the former governor's palace in the old city center. There were few Ukrainian professors at that time in all of the empire, so almost all teachers of Kharkiv University were invited from Western Europe. They brought with themselves the latest knowledge and scientific approach to medicine. With the advent of the medical school in Kharkiv, it began to have a strong influence on the development of healthcare not only in the city, but in all Ukraine and neighboring Russian cities, because it was the only medical school in the region. Gradually, the medical school began to acquire its own clinics for the treatment of Kharkiv residents and training students in medical practice. The number of clinics was constantly growing and their location in the city was changing. On this photo, you can see one of the first clinics that was arranged in a building in a university campus. Now it no longer exists and in its place was built the library of our university. 
In the first years of its existence, medical school had very few students, because scientific medicine was just emerging, and most people in Ukraine used the services of barbers and medicine men. Some years school had only three students, and some years it had about 12. But over time, scientific medicine began to gain supporters, and by the middle of the 19th century, medical school had the most of the university's students. On this photo you can see a reconstruction of how students of our university dressed in the first half of the 19th century. On the background you can see a costume of the second half of the century. This reconstruction was performed by our university museum a few years ago. Why do you think they reconstructed only costumes of male students of the 19th century, but not of female? Write your opinion in the comments. In the second half of the 19th century, there were so many people desiring to study at the medical school that the university couldn't feed them all in the old building. So the need for the new building specifically for medics was obvious. At the end of the century, two new buildings were built for medical school on the northern outskirt of Kharkiv. In the last years of 19th century and first years of 20th century, an entire block of new clinics were built near the medical school. It was separate buildings for ophthalmic, therapeutic, obstetrics, surgical, neurological and children's clinics. Soon the district around these buildings of medical school became inhabited mostly by teachers and students of medical school, who lived, practiced and studied there. People call this part of the city a clinical town. Now it is situated in the new center of Kharkiv. Most of these buildings survived, except the main building of the medical school. During the Second World War, it was destroyed with bombs. In its place you can see now the entrance to the subway station University, or Universität. And clinics were transferred under the control of the city, and now it is the regional clinic hospital of Kharkiv. Teachers of the medical school took an active part in the life of the city, trying to establish healthcare in it. In 1860, members of our medical school established Kharkiv Medical Society. The idea to create this society belonged to the professor of surgery Wilhelm Gruber. The first president of society was Dushan Lambl, the world-famous pathologist who moved to Kharkiv from Czechia. The society became so powerful that it could raise funds for the publication of its own journal, the purchase of land and buildings in the city center, the construction and maintenance of its own hospitals and research centers. In 1910, it established the Women's Medical Institute, and just two years later, a new building was built for the society. People of Kharkiv called this new building a Palace of Medicine. It now houses the Mechnikov Institute of Microbiology and Immunology. A Nobel Prize winner Ilya Mechnikov studied at Kharkiv University. As a child he was tutored by one of the students of our medical school and started to dream of becoming a physician himself. But mother insisted him to become biologist because she was worried that being a doctor Young Ilya would not be able to withstand human grief. So he majored in natural sciences, but most of the consequent life he devoted to the study of human physiology. As you know, in 1882 he discovered macrophages in phagocytosis. This discovery turned out to be the major defense mechanism in immunity, so he usually considered it as one of the founder of immunology. The first emergency medical assistance society in Kharkiv 
was established in 1895 by Emily Bellin, one of the teachers of our medical school. First its name was Night Shift Team, then it was renamed to the Society of Night Watch Doctors in Kharkiv. And in 1909, professor of our medical school Ivan Abalensky founded an ambulance society that was called Quick Help. The first building of this society has been preserved and even today performs its primary functions as an emergency station. When the communists came to power in the country, they began to fight the intellectual opposition, the core of which they considered universities. Therefore, in 1920, all universities were first closed and then re-emerged as institutes for people's education. The medical faculty was separated from Kharkiv University, merged with the Women's Medical Institute and transformed into Kharkiv Medical Academy. Over time, it developed and expanded and became a modern Kharkiv National Medical University. In 1933, Kharkiv University was restored, but without its medical school. In the middle of the 20th century, the university became so large that it could no longer fit into its old building. Therefore, in 1956, it was moved to a huge building in the new city center. It was a dilapidating building that was badly bombed out during the World War II and remained unoccupied for a long time. So it was transferred to the university and rebuilt by students and teachers. At first, the new building was too big for the university, so it housed not only faculties, but also the dormitory. Therefore, students could walk between lectures and their rooms without leaving the building. Eventually, the space became scarce even for the faculties, so the university grew into more and more new buildings. In 1993, the medical school was revived at Karazin University. The first few months, with its first 18 students, it was situated in the main building and then moved to more spacious rooms in the separate building on Nauki Avenue. In 2004, the military university on Freedom Square was closed and its building was transferred to the Karazin University. Now both building of the university became to be located on different sides of the same square, one on the south side and the other one on the north side. Therefore, the old building began to be called the main building and the new one was called the northern building. Some faculties have moved there, including the medical one. In the first years, it occupied only a part of the fifth floor, but over time there were more and more students, and therefore now it already occupies many rooms on several floors. So our medical school has a long and thorny history. It functioned successfully during imperial times, was liquidated under Soviet rule and revived almost immediately after Ukraine gained its independence. During all this time, our school has managed to turn many young people from around the world into qualified doctors who are now saving the lives of their patients and hopefully recall their students' years in Kharkiv with warmth in their hearts. This concludes our course of lectures. Thank you for your attention and stay healthy.